to the sky Never let adventures pass you by Be free and follow your crazy dreams We're living our vision in the RV Come ride with us and you'll be free We are in Mansfield, Ohio and we're getting ready to go see what, Michelle? A prison. It's the Ohio State Reformatory. It's supposed to be haunted as well. Very haunted. <laughs> we don't like ghosts. We, no, we like them. Don't tell <laughs> we ghosts. Like, we, 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 like, like, we like you, ghost. We like happy ghosts. Happy ghosts, yes. <laughs> Built between 1886 and 1910, the Ohio State Reformatory, also known as the Mansfield Reformatory, is a historic prison located in Mansfield, Ohio. This facility was seen in a number of films, TV shows, and music videos, but was made famous by the 1994 film The Shawshank Redemption, when it was used for most scenes of the movie. What once operated as a maximum security prison is a late 19th century building that looks more like a grand hotel that once housed the rich and famous. a little bit of the Shawshank Redemption last night. Classic movie, one of my favorites. Get us in the mood. Because it was filmed here. I've seen such a sorry looking heap of maggots in all my life. Taking bets today, Red? Smoke's a coin, better's choice. Smoke, put me down for two. The history of the Ohio State Reformatory began in 1862. The field where the reformatory would be built was used as a training camp for Civil War soldiers. The camp was named Camp Mordecai Bartley in honor of the Mansfield man who served as Ohio governor in the 1840s. Welcome to Shawshank. The reformatory opened its doors on September 15, 1896 to its first 150 offenders. These prisoners were brought by train from Columbus and put immediately to work on the prison sewer system and the 25-foot stone wall surrounding the complex. What is that noise? Electric chair. Nope. Yeah. It is the actual electric chair used for 315 executions at the Ohio Penitentiary in Columbus, Ohio, so not at this facility. And it was used from 1897 until 1963. No executions took place in this reformatory, though. During its 94 years as a working prison, 154,000 inmates passed through the gates of the Ohio State Reformatory. Many died of diseases like influenza and tuberculosis. Some went mad, hung themselves, and at least one inmate lit himself on fire. 215 numbered graves stand just outside the reformatory and is a vivid testament to the harsh reality of prison life. Look at this ceiling. I know. Oh, it's curved. Violence is all too common inside any prison and was far from unknown in this one. There was a place reserved for the worst of the violence. The worst of it occurred well away from the main cell block, a far lonelier place deep beneath the prison ground, a place called local control or solitary by some and known by everyone else as the hole. 
Near total isolation can crack all but the toughest of cons, but none was so alone that there wasn't room for death. Once two men were left too long in a single tomb-like cell, only one would walk out, leaving his cellmate's body behind, stuffed beneath a bunk. No weird feelings yet, you? No. The ghosts of these violent and maltreated men are not easily silenced. Visitors and tour guides have been pushed and punched by unseen forces. As with other haunted locations, many claim to feel an inexplicable chill while on prison grounds. Witnesses have heard cell doors slam and seen dark apparitions. Shaken tour guides swear they hear voices still to this day. Some say they hear a man and woman talking that is too faint to understand, too persistent to ignore, and chilling to listeners who think they're alone. Look at all the um, wallpaper and paint where it's all peeling off. Find special <laughs> guests that you can actually see, or creepy dark room. You go first. Me go first. No, I, I just get a creepy feeling in there. It smells old. She wasn't talking about you. <laughs> Stop. That's not a plane. <laughs> Sorry. We're not joking. Very odd noise. Okay, deep, deep breath, right? You'll be okay, sweetie. I, I got you. I got you. Just please stay close. You go first. Nope. Do not shut door. I wonder if that means because it keeps opening. Why is that chair sitting there by itself? I don't know. It's for Casper. Do not shut. <laughs> Let's just hope that door doesn't shut on its own. Hey, don't go far. Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. Okay, this is the creepiest part of this place so far. Right behind you. Did you see this chain hanging from the ceiling? I know. It's a very odd placement of the chain. Where'd you go? Right here. Don't walk away from me. <laughs> wait. Just wait on me in case... I want to be close in case something happens to you, sweetie. Can <laughs> you want me to hold your hand? Please. So this room looks like it's just a, a set from the movie Shawshank. They just set it up in here. Scared the heck out of me. <laughs> I saw a silhouette of this guy over here. Literally, my heart stopped for a second. <laughs> wow. Did you see up there? Good. 
get busy living or get busy dying. That's right. I just got a chuckle. I mean, it's not really funny, but in my mind, I'm, because it's an AED machine, mm -hmm. is that in case people need... Yeah, I just about <laughs> needed that. So that's the chapel. That's the chapel. I need to go pray. And so we'll stop well, there. And uh, there's evidently more paranormal activity. Here. Oh, great. <laughs> You're such a brave woman. It's daytime. I'd be, I would not want to take this tour at night. No, I'm <laughs> not doing a tour at night here. No. Yeah, th this is the room that was creepy. <laughs> Have you uh, ever heard of any stories in here? So I was opening up the building one morning all by myself, and there was nobody else in here. I knew I was alone. I had to be in here early to open up for a tour. And so I'm walking through the hallway, and I usually don't like to come in this room by myself anyway because of all the stories that surround it, but I had personally never had an experience prior to that. So one morning, I walked in the room, and as soon as my finger goes to touch this light switch, as plain as another human being being with me, I hear, leave. Just like that. Oh my gosh. And I'm guessing you did? Absolutely. <laughs> I ran to the nearest human I could find. Luckily, he was in the east cell block. Oh gosh. Yeah, and what was this used, the room used for? We don't have an exact definition of why this room might have been used, but this whole third floor area would have been used for single guards quarters. This is the only room in the reformatory that has no windows and is completely soundproof. So we think this is kind of <laughs> where the third shift guards might have slept. Oh, uh, okay. Hmm. Huh. So you've never had that happen again? It was just that one time? or Just that one time. Basically that. because you never came back? <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Except for right now. Except for right now. Yeah. It's not a room I like to linger in. No, no, no. no. <laughs> On to the chapel. And there's a cell block. Says. That room is really creepy. There's like airflow up here. Friday and Saturday, we offer public ghost hunts and ghost walks. Um, ghost walks are pretty much a little guided tour of the building telling all the paranormal stories about all of the different areas. Uh, ghost hunts happen every other Saturday. Those we invite usually around 100 people to come out. The entire building's opened up from 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. to do whatever paranormal investigating you would like. Hmm. I would never want to be here at night. <laughs> no. Nope. Catch me here. <laughs> it interests me, but I'll pass. Yeah, this is the attic. Yeah. We're, what? This is the attic? We're going to the west attic. Here, just take the camera. I'll wait here. Oh. I gotta say some prayers. And... Really? Just even the, the architecture attic. work, those, those columns. That's really cool. Man, that is... A long ways down. It is a long ways down. That's what that is. What am I missing out on? Oh, just a few creepy noises going on over there. Somewhere. Seriously? Yep, yep. Like what kind of noise? Hello? So, we heard just like I don't even know how to describe it. Just like a few little, maybe, tappings, or I don't even know. Would you say it was something yeah, like that? Yeah, those steps are a very common occurrence up here as well. Um, as far as reformatory, um, in my personal opinion, this is the most paranormal way I can spot in the entire prison. Oh, really? oh this is? In 1930, the Ohio State Penitentiary called the go. U.S.'s most deadliest prison fire. In that fire, 322 men actually lost their lives. Oh, wow. And after the fire, since Columbus pretty much had an entire cell block that had burned to the ground, they had to start shipping inmates to other state-run institutions. We had a pretty 
big building here in Mansfield, so of course we were chosen as one of the institutions to receive inmates. But what we held here at the reformatory was young first-time offenders between the ages of 15 and 30. These guys down in Columbus are maximum security inmates. We did not want them coming in here, mixing in with our reform boys and pretty much ruining our reputation here as a reformatory. So what we did, instead of integrating them into general population, we stuck them in this attic with no cells, no handcuffs, no shackles, just them and a whole lot of bunk beds. Pretty much really? free reign to do whatever they wanted to do in this attic. And according to the state of Ohio, of course, there is zero record of anything bad ever happening in this attic. It was all sunshine and rainbows oh, for yeah, these guys sure. out here. I bet there was some murders going on. Probably. Uh, what we know through oral history that the guard who was in charge of the attic here below us uh -huh. was also in charge of all of the inmates that would have been kept up here in the attic. And he said when these guys would come out every day, that count was never the same. Oh my day goodness. after day after day. Yeah. And you know, you have to think about these fit to your guards. If a situation ever arose in this attic, you're not going to run in here like <laughs> Superman trying to save the day. You know, nope. you're outnumbered. Yeah. It wasn't until after all of these guys would come out for the day to eat or do whatever they had to do, that's when the guards would come in and see what had happened from the night before. Oh my goodness, wow. wow. The thing that we ask is that you not go in the room to the far back left. All that's back there is a very unsafe staircase and an oh. electrical box, and that you just not climb the ladder on the side walls. Oh. Well, from the sounds of it, this isn't very safe either. <laughs> huh. Come on, after you. Yeah, right. And then he said we can shine our light on the walls, and we might be able to see some um, of their writing. Mm. Writings from very oh, yeah. lonely men. That's a bad word. Don't put that on there. What was it? The F word. Frank? Yeah. Where exactly were those noises that you guys oh, heard? Kind of right here. <laughs> it sounded like it was kind of right here. Oh, there's a uh, person, I mean, a new drawing. A new drawing? Yeah, of a woman. Oh, oh. Okay. wait, that one. Yep, these were lonely men in here. Very lonely men. This place is super, super creepy. Okay, we did just hear, I heard that noise myself. Are you wanting to walk down further? I will if you want to, but <laughs> you don't want to. <laughs> okay, now that is really creepy. Boy, it's creepy back there. Yes, definitely. We were too chicken to go past the middle part. We started hearing the noises. Oh, did you? Yes. Yeah. A little, like, further down. Yeah, don't know if it was... Yeah, I don't know what it was. Yeah. Mm. I mean, we're ready to go. Why am I the last one out of this hole? <laughs> Alright, so we're about to go out onto our east cell block. Our east cell block was the second cell block to be completed around 1910. It uh, stands at six tiers high. There are two ranges of cells per tier. There are approximately 50 cells per range. It is almost 600 cells. It is one of the world's largest freestanding steel cell blocks. And the cells that we're going to walk by were only intended for one man for eight hours a day while he slept. Very quickly, due to overcrowding, they had to put bunks inside of these cells. And at the times we were severely overcrowded, there were up to three men per cell. Wow. Hmm. This prison saw thousands of prisoners during its operation between 1896 and 1986. Originally believed to be a humane prison where offenders could be rehabilitated. It quickly devolved into a place known for torture, abuse, and murder. Inmates eventually filed a lawsuit describing its inhabitable conditions. Most new fish come close to madness the first night. Somebody always breaks down crying. 
This is what is known as the alley. This is where all of the electrical and the plumbing is to each an individual cell. So if an inmate decided he was going to be unruly, flood his cell, they could actually come back here to the alley, uh, turn the water off to each and every individual cell, and maybe even as a further form of, form of punishment, uh, they could cut the electricity off as well. So the first cell on every range, this is what we consider a range, it's a grouping of cells, it always belonged to an officer. This is his office and it also housed the opening and closing mechanism for each of the cells. So inside of the cell you will see the long metal bar, you would hold that down for five seconds. There is a chain driven crank inside of that cell, you would go to turning the crank. Above all of the cells there is a chain driven mechanism and pretty much when gravity would kind of take over all 50 cells on the range could be open and closed at one time. So this second cell here, this one is fully restored. This is what it would have looked like when inmates occupied it around the 1950s and 60s. Yeah, these are really small. I can't imagine, like you said, even maybe up to three. Yes. And Cell 13, uh, I always like to stop and talk about inmate James Lockhart. So Lockhart was serving 1 to 15 years for assault with intent to kill. On February 6 of 1960, he took his own life by setting himself on fire in this cell using lighter yeah. fluid and a match. And he was only 22 years old at the time of his death. Wow. How horrible. The cell blocks in the movie Shawshank Redemption wasn't actually uh, filmed here in these cell blocks because the, uh, I'm guessing, the, I think he said the movie director wanted the uh, cells to face each other. So what did they do? They bought a, uh, or transformed a warehouse building yeah, downtown? Westinghouse Warehouse and they built the pretty much entire cell block from the ground up. Wow. Yeah, we don't put that kind of money in our films. <laughs> so at this time, uh, I'm going to let you guys kind of explore these three floors on your own. No. You like. No? <laughs> you don't want to stay in the dark? <laughs> All right. Well, By ourselves? <laughs> we can go up here to the top floor. Uh, prior to 1928, these three floors, they had multiple purposes, mainly for dormitory and educational classrooms. But from 1928 to 1951, all three of these floors were actually used as the hospital. So this top floor would have been actually a recovery floor, uh, the second floor was the surgical floor, and the bottom was check-in or triage. After 1951, they built a full-scale hospital out into our yard. The top floor, this became the prison library. The middle floor was a recreation room, and the bottom floor became the general population showers for the east cell block. And this was the library. Pretty good sized library. versus what it was today. After it became that rec room, of course, they added a lot of the walls, which you can still see some of the original, the doorways, the square windows there. The windows are still there in the back, except they just put the walls in front. This is where they filmed the shower scenes in Shawshank.
So you'll notice that the cell doors on these two tiers are kind of different from the rest of them. They have that metal mesh installed over them. Uh, these two tiers were used for local control or solitary overflow. So pretty much the worst of the worst criminals mm -hmm. would have been kept here on tiers one and two. Uh, these tiers could also be used as protective custody. Say you have an inmate here at the reformatory, you want nobody to know that he is here. Once he is inside of the cell and the door is closed with the screen over top of it, you cannot tell who is inside of the cell. Mm -hmm. Tier 3 was also used as one of our protective custody tiers, say you're a former guard, politician, police officer. Tiers 4 and 5 were your general population and most of your new inmates started up on Tier 6 here in the East Cell Block. are kind of the pillar structures that you see on the outside of our building. Originally those were all supposed to be filled in, but the architect here at the reformatory he really didn't believe in budgets. He read ours at about <laughs> six hundred to eight hundred thousand, but read it as about one point four million dollars. So they decided to just leave those empty. They put a door on it and that's where they stored all their wood, coal, brooms, shovels, any kind of maintenance item uh, they would have needed over here in the cell block. As far as our record indicate there were never inmates put in here for oh, like solitary. Yeah. Okay. Over here are the special showers. These are for people that were in protective custody so they were not taking showers with the others. Props from the movie Shawshank Redemption if you remember the 500 yards of oh, smelling yeah. foulness he had to crawl through which is actually that 18 foot long <laughs> tunnel. And probably the prized possession of Andy's tunnels right over here along our north wall. This is what I call the Rita Hayworth Tunnel. This was the tunnel uh, that was inside of Andy's cell. On this side is where Rita Hayworth, Marilyn Monroe, Raquel Welch would have covered. On the other side is where the camera would have been set up, and that's where they got that iconic last shot of Warden Norton, <laughs> yeah. Red, and Captain Hadley as they all realized Andy had escaped. So the old hole was the literal hole in our sub-basement. Uh, say another inmate and I were caught fighting out on the east cell block. Um, the guards would take us down into the basement. It would lift up a giant steel lid, revealing a hole that went about 14 feet in the ground. Uh, both inmates would be lowered down into that hole using a ladder. That ladder would then been lifted up when both inmates were put down, and they would get two buckets a day, one filled with food, the other was empty to go to the bathroom. Once the inmates and buckets were lowered, they put the lid over top of you, and you were down there until they wanted to get you out. Well, one day, a flash flood that came through Mansfield. Uh, the hole ended up caving in and flooding. After that, it was rendered unusable. So they, what they did was they filled the hole in, and they built the new solitary confinement right above it. Oh, okay. Go ahead. These first few cells that you guys are going to pass, these were added in the 1970s. So when we were transitioning into that maximum security prison. These are what we call sensory deprivation cells. Uh, once the steel door shuts, you're sitting pretty much in complete darkness and complete silence. On days one and two, you were given a slice of bread, a bowl of broth, and a cup of water. But on day three, they said, we're going to serve you more of a complete meal. Well, that complete meal was known as loaf. Loaf was all of the cafeteria leftovers from the previous day, put into a blender, poured into a pan, and then baked. And they were given a few slices of that. Mm. That is the stuff basement. That is oh. where that original oh. hole was located. You guys want to go check it out? The original hole? Mm -hmm. You want to see it? Sure. All right, well, here's the camera all the way <laughs> here. You go. I'm just trying to open it into the frame. The 
This is the newest piece of concrete slab in this basement. And there would have been a steel lid right above it where that opening is. The guards lifted the steel lid up. They took you down to this point. Once it got to that concrete slab, that pull went an additional 12 to 14 feet down. It would have been originally enclosed, as you can kind of tell by the paint here. So that way the inmates, when they got to this point, of course, they just couldn't jump off the ladder into the basement. And it went an, an additional 14 feet down? Yep. And it was, literally was just that square? Yeah, so if size. you can imagine two inmates. Oh, here. Oh, wow. So, like, yeah, this is all it is. Just a little brief history of this cell block. Uh, this is our west cell block, the first and original cell block to be completed in 1896. This would have housed the original 150 inmates that arrived that year. This is where all of your trustees, your lifers, your more well-behaved inmates were kept. So if you were an inmate here at the reformatory, this is the cell block you wanted to be on. Mm -hmm. Inmates would refer to this cell block as the Hilton instead yeah. of the Motel 6. <laughs> A few music videos were shot here in our west cell block. Little Wayne, he filmed his music video Go DJ here in 2004, is that right? Yep. And then uh, Godsmack, the rock group, filmed their music video Awake in a large portion of the prison. They also used cell 61 right next to it. On the right side of the wall, inside of the cell is carved, Pain is Caused by Pleasure, which is featured in that music video. And country music singer Eric Church filmed his music video for some of it here in our west cell block, east shower room, and fingerprinting processing room. Hmm. Man, is it cold. <laughs> it is very cold in here, so they don't heat this the cell blocks in the in the winter time here anymore anymore yeah the walls of this prison have seen some terrible things and it is no surprise that they have left a permanent mark in the form of paranormal disturbances There are countless tales of strange occurrences that are believed to be the work of restless spirits of both former inmates and prison guards alike. The Mansfield Prison, also known as Ohio State Reformatory, is believed to be one of the most haunted prisons in the entire United States. And don't give me any trouble. <laughs> I'm innocent. Everybody in here is innocent. Don't you know that? Keep in mind, it first opened in 1896. Some of the sentences, pocket picking and horse stealing. Horse stealing was quite a, quite a thing. So the guard room is the pivot of the prison connecting the prison proper with the institution offices and the outside world. At the rear is the cage from which the iron barred doors leading into the prison are operated. Standing in front of the cage is Captain McClure, day captain of the guards. In the foreground is that part of the guard room used as visitor's room where pr prisoners may receive members of the immediate families once a month.
don't belong here. I'm innocent. She's not innocent. I'm innocent. She thinks she is. Believe me, she's not innocent.